So thank you all for coming. Um, thank you for the center, uh, the CBB for the invitation, and Christina for set up all this uh, uh, seminar. Um, today, uh, I will present with uh, my student Wei Zhang on this topic, the uh, several muscle inspired electrically conductive polymer nanofibers. So at the beginning, let's first introduce my research lab in this area and share you with the context, the background for this particular type work uh, we done is working on. So my lab work on surface science and bio nanomaterial. So this field is motivated by the fundamental challenge of the growing need of bio nanotechnology. The focus of my research lab on the adhesion, subject forces, and associated interfacial phenomena. The soft material, soft means it's organic, polymeric, and uh, biological tissues, in contrast with uh, metallic or inorganic materials. So the reason we focus, focus on this is we handle one of the tough questions in manufacture, that's the durability. For any new material, any new device we want to put into practice, the durability is a big issue. So adhesion three force are the underlying principles for durability. For research, we take a biomimetic or bio-inspired approach. So we study the lotus leaf, hydro or olophobic surface. Gecko, lizard gecko climb on the walls, the zebra mussels. So this image shows one of particular application we target is a flexible electronic. We develop the ink, a nanocomposite, and they use it for the bonding and assembly. So biomimetic. This is a relatively new field, also called bio-inspiration. Essentially, this is about, we look at a natural design, the biological organism, to study their biology, include biomechanics, uh, biochemistry, and biological functions. We understand the physical chemistry properties and use it for design and fabrication material and engineering practice. The two aspects in my research lab are handled. One is the physical or the topological. We study biomimetic micro nano structures. Lotus leaf is one particular biological system study. But lotus leaf have self-cleaning properties attribute to these micro nano structures. Geckos climb on the walls, is smart, climbing animals. They have the food hair, allow it to attach and detach quickly on the walls and ceilings. So we look at this surface topology and use all technology to make a different structures, similar to lotus leaf, at one end. Another end is the food hair. One key parameter is the hat, the features. So we published some, published some work on this. These structures allow us to control or engineer the surface interactions, like a whiting, adhesion, friction, even bonding. The second aspect is more chemistry we call biomimetic chemistry. So the zebra muscle is one typical example which have a superior chemistry on the food protein. So zebra mu muscle secret protein allow it, allow it attack to rocks permanently, which can withstand harsh environment like a wave, water, salt, So by looking at these zebra muscles, we have, in, in the recent few years, developed an underwater superglue, which is a synthetic version of 
the several muscle glue. We attach to the rock with aluminum this old material. Or we also look at the small structures. Today we focus on this nanofiber, which we get inspired about one of function group several muscle. That is the dopa or cattle groups. We manufacture these nanofibers, which is stickier and conductive. So we contribute to new knowledge we created. Also, we uh, fire patterns for our new material or process. Yeah, please. So today, that's the uh, several muscles. Uh, and one of the small molecules we use is dopamine. There are two different ways to look at dopamine. One is from the neutron transmitter. That's in human body, we have dopamine. It's a chemical make ourselves happier. Um, another way is to look at from material perspective, which relate to zebra muscles. This come to the work by Lee uh, in 2007. So in this work, they, they look at the zebra muscle protein, the se different sequence, and also look at the key chemical functional group. One is called dopa, another is a lysin. So they have this cathol group and the amine group. So dopamine contains these two key functional groups. It's one of good examples for simplified com complicated biological organism, organism into a simple chemistry. Yeah. Dopamine, in one way to look at is how sticky means it's chemically absorbed to almost any surface. It's molecules we put in water in the base condition. They absorb onto solid surface, form a thin film. This thin film will alter the surface property of any solid. It's used for surface modification, surface polarization. This thin film is nanoscale, 10 to 100 nanometer thick. And in the literature in uh, last few years, many report on used dopamine for further fertilization. Dopamine by itself in water is not stable. They oxidize, become brownish and the brownish color. The mechanism of the dopamine from thin film is still under debate. The two possible mechanisms. One is um, polymerization. Another route is a physical stacking, using hydrogen bonding. So even though there are lots of debate on mechanism, the material scientist is move on, find out ways to use it. So. Uh, Back to the year 2009 or uh, 2008, uh, we started this work. We look at the literature and think about what we can do for the system. So many research work relate dopamine to dopamine. It has been demonstrated as a very versatile and multifunctional coating to modify material surface. However, the material perspective of PDA, polydomination film, is much less its plot. This situation limit is a practical application. So this image shows one of the PDA, polydopamine film, coated on plastic, like silicon rubber. We can see lots of cracks. So this situation limit is application. It's no problem for fundamental research, but go to practical application that's issues. So based on the literature progress and our own understanding, the objective for all research we said at the beginning is to investigate, investigate the property of the same film, surface phenomena, adhesion, friction, fracture. Based on this un un understanding, we also move on to make this dopamine film something useful, non-composite. 
So today we talk about conductive polyparallel combination with the dopamine. And also we use with hydrogel, like arginate, to make the new materials. So far we have three key researchers involved in this uh, research direction. Uh, the first one is uh, Kuo Yang. Um, he do a lot of work. Uh, we, he's a PhD student, we graduate soon. And Alec, another PhD student, who done their work recently. So let's, before uh, we take over to talk about the nano uh, fiber from dopamine polyparon, let's briefly show you what we have learned uh, on this polydopamine film and the related work. The first step on in this direction is we try to understand why the thin film crack and at what condition. One contribution we made is we find a way to determine the elastic modulus. That's a core, core contribution. Um, briefly is the elasticity about 10 gigapascal. This is the first time we determine this number. This number has very profound technical implication. That means if the cold substrate is stiff, then the dopamine film, like a glass, ceramic, the film will be very smooth, no crack. But if the sub solid substrate is soft, like silicon rubber, PP, PE, polypropylene, polyethylene, the film will crack. It's a mechanical mismatch. That's the first contribution in the field we, uh, we contribute. Yeah. In recent few years, we've also found a way to preserve this dopamine small molecules stick, stickiness means the absorb, absorption properties. Because once this film polymerize or coat on surface, they become relatively inert, even though they can further functionalize. So they become relatively non-sticky, non-adhesive. So in order to use the so-called sticking dopamine single molecules, we combine with other material form nanocomposite. Two systems we have explored. One is dopamine iron arginate. Arginate is one of the biomass adhesives. We aim for wide adhesion bonding and water. Second is we add dopamine in situ to the synthesized electroconductor polymers. There's two uh, material arginate and polyperon chemical structure. So this all achievement in the first part uh, is a type of superglue, is a synthetic version of zebra marcel glue. So we have our material, so far we try different scenarios. Metal, metal, hydrogel, plastic, rock, metal and even the leaking of oil in petri dish. We demo through this. So in the last year, we start looking at as a tissue adhesive, like a wood dressing, tissue adhesive, bandage. Um, we found it's working also quite well. Here is a porcelain tissue. We cut into two pieces. We use all glue to join together. So far, uh, uh, Alec and Kuo still work on this. So now let's turn to um, the state, to the way who will talk about this uh, polymer nanofiber from Piron and um, Paul Dopamine. This is his PhD thesis work. He worked on this in the last uh, three years, more than three years. Yeah, uh, Wei, please. All right. Um, thank you, Professor Zhao, for the introduction. So um, to, start you, uh, to start with my talk, I will first uh, talk about the muscle adhesive. So that is the main focus of my PhD study. Um, as we all know, in humidity environment or wet surface conditions, uh, water may affect the mechanical and chemical properties of the adhesives uh, and the nature of the interface. So that may lead water uh, to be the surface contaminate in many uh, adhesion applications. So however, the adhesion is a way of marine animals to live in aqueous environment. 
and the nature provides many examples of like how uh, this permanent, permanent and temporary bonding solutions uh, that marine animals is providing. So um, one of the typical examples is marine mussels like this. They can uh, secrete uh, adhesive protein that help, help them bonding to uh, almost any surfaces underwater and resistant the turbulent, uh, the cold temperature and the salt conditions in the ocean. Uh, in general, the, the adhesive strategy of marine mussels is that they secrete the group protein that can bond in strongly to hard surfaces. And we identified a, a special and unique protein called MEFP5. And in this protein, uh, we found two unique structures, which is DOPA and lysium. Uh, by uh, mimicking the functional groups of these two components, the dichotical functional groups from DOPA and the amine functional groups of, with, from lysium, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, a university, uh, the Northwestern University scientist, developed a simple molecule, not developed, he found a simple molecule that is dopamine which can mimic the, um, both the functionalities of these two components. And the dopamine itself is a sticky molecule with a chemical structure of amine, And it's a biological molecule that play a number of important roles in human bodies. And also uh, it's a neutral transmitter. So dopamine itself can polymerize and form well bonding uh, on various substrates and forming a nanoscale thin film. The dopamine coating process is uh, quite straightforward. We just put the substrates, like it, the substrates are not only limited to flat substrates, we can basically put any shape, any curved substrates into the solution to make a very universal uh, coating strategy. And the uh, immersion of the substrates into the doping solution, we buffered into a right marine pH at about 8.5, will result in a simultaneous deposition of a thin polymer film. That's the most interesting part. Uh, this process has happened itself. We, don't, we just leave it in the uh, atmosphere and the, atmos uh, and the oxygen in the air can uh, oxidize the dopamine and initiate the polymerization process. So um, the most used way to initiate the polymerization process is called oxidation. We can use the atmospheric oxygen. We can also use different oxidants such as uh, APS so, uh, sodium persulfate. We can uh, also use ammonia persulfate. And these conditions can make it uh, more universal because we do not need a, a, a basic pH. If we instead of using oxygen, so we can basically oxidize this film in acidic and neutral conditions. Uh, another way is uh, called is initiated by the UV irradiation. So by UV irradiation, uh, we just like uh, put the dopamine solution and uh, using the UV light, we can initiate the polymerization process. The one of the most advanced process in this. Uh, process is that we can make a pattern surface. We can initiate the light and make a pattern surface and make a PDF uh, polydopamine pattern film. And another way is called the biosynthesis. Biosynthesis involves using the enzyme, one type of the enzyme, to oxidize the dopa and then to form the polydopamine thin film. And the last step is uh, more common in the uh, biosensor applications because they are biocompatible and it will be benefit for the biosensor application. Um, polydoping film has been investigated intensively in recent years, but the film assembly mechanism, along with the chemical structure, are still open questions. Um, because mainly owing to its complicated redox process and the formation of many intermediates during the dopamine polymerization process. Um, moreover, the polydoping solid itself is almost uh, non-soluble in water and in most of the solvents. So make the traditional characterization technique difficult uh, to process, such as MR or GPC, uh, because they are insolubility, so we cannot actually use that. Uh, 
since this film was first discovered in 2007, uh, many structures have been proposed in the literature. The first model is the, the oxidative uh, polarization process the, uh, is uh, showing here as rot one. So at first, dopamine uh, molecule uh, has, been, has been oxidized into the dichotal function groups has been oxidized into the quinol functional group, and then um, the de they depropionate and then structurally rearranged into a circularized intermedium as these two. And then they polymerized through the uh, intermedium linked through this uh, hetero circularized amine ring. And they form the two different types of structures. That's the first route was brought into uh, in 2007. And the second route, which is proposed uh, in a different way, at first the doping molecule also being polymerized and they uh, cyclized into two different intermediums. Uh, then instead of the covalent bonding to link this monomer, uh, another research showed they are actually formed by physical, uh, not physical, uh, bond, not covalent bonding. They, uh, linked through the pi pi stacking, uh, hydrogen bonding, or the uh, super molecule aggregation. That is the route two. So the solid states MR can form the first two steps of the dopamine uh, polymerization process, which is uh, either they're linked by covalent bonds or uh, non covalent forces. So to follow up this study, uh, one research showed it's actually uh, have a different structure. They involved the covalent bonding. So instead of all the doping monomer has been oxidized into the quinol mm -hmm. structure, some of mm -hmm. the monomer are still maintain dopamine the um, uh, oxidized form. So they linked through the covalent bonds in, in this polymer state. And another different way of the doping polymerization uh, mechanism is proposed here. It's a more complicated structure. And they believe that the covalent bonds and the non-covalent bonds are both uh, contributed to the final structure. So at first, the doping oxidized polymerization through a covalent bonds and simultaneously uh, a significant amount of polymerized dopamine and its polymerized form to form a intermediate at the beginning. And this trimer, three different molecules, are tightly trapped in the polymerized form to form a new complex. And this complex is the final state of the polydopamine structure. And also a study showing this trimer, uh, this trimer is also being uh, tightly bonded into this complex. And it's really hard to uh, release from the polydopamine system. Uh, polydopamine was first introduced as an adherent polymer coating uh, inspired by nature in 2007. And it has been risen as a promising research topic uh, in different fields, ranging from the fabrication of the coatings to the preparation of fun functional nano uh, composites of the, but as a consequence, significant efforts has been uh, directed towards the understanding of the fundamental properties of this unique polydopamine thin film. And in this presentation, I will mainly focus on three different parts, the chemical reactivity, the adhesion properties, and the biocompatibility, uh, since we're in a biomedical uh, discussion here. Um, so first, the chemical reactivity. So doping, polydopamine thin film uh, are, remar are remarkably reactive they first can chelate different di or trivalent metal ions to form a very stable complex, for example, such as iron and copper. And second, they can strongly interact with various organic and or inorganic uh, substrates via the covalent bonding, pi-pi stacking, or hydrogen bonding. Uh, moreover, um, upon the oxidation, when we get the uh, quinol functional group, they are very sensitive to thio and the, uh, the nitride uh, derivatives, and they can react with them to form a new adduct. So in addition to this, uh, the whole system is very reactive, and they can uh, interact with a lot of species. And also, we have a main group here. It can uh, also react with other organic uh, molecules to 
uh, add into the system. The second part is its adhesion property. So it is one of the excellent uh, properties offered by the polydopamine. Uh, and the general understanding that the dicatal functional groups is playing a very important role here. But some research have been shown that uh, the dicatal functional groups are actually uh, important for achieving underwater adhesion to inorganic surfaces. Uh, one experiment is like using an AFM experiment. So people um, actually fabricate uh, DOPA functional groups into an AFM tip and they brought this tip into contact with the uh, inorganic substrate. And when you pull off, we can detect about like 500 micronewton pore force in aqueous uh, solution, which is actually very strong for a single molecule. So that demonstrating the dicatal functional group have an uh, adhesion property to inorganic surface. But after we oxidize the dicatal functional group into quino, we found that uh, adhesion vanished the adhesion between the tip and the inorganic substrate was gone after the oxidation. Um, but when we switch the substrate to an organic substrate, we found this uh, adhesion appear again. So it involves the oxidation of the cathol to the quino, and the quino functional group can actually stick well with the organic substrate. So uh, because of this research, uh, even we don't understand the uh, polymerization process and the structure, but we believe uh, it is involved the auto oxidation of the uh, dicatol to the quino, and both of them are very important for achieving underwater adhesion. Uh, the last property I'm going to talk about is the biocompatibility. So um, the cathode derivatives, including polydopamine, exist in a variety of living system, systems and uh, participate in a broad range of biological process. For example, dopamine is um, a biological significant hormones and neurotransmitter that are responsible for converting the nursing pulse, uh, regulating heartbeats, and the uh, to uh, to. Uh, initiate the, the happy feelings, and also they can uh, regulating the brain's oxygen supply in human body. And in another part, in another form, polydopamine, it is a, a major component of the naturally occurred melanin, which is a, a eye pigment. And it is supposed to show excellent biocompatibility. So as a result, um, to determine how the possible toxicity of the polydopamine, uh, researchers have found that uh, a lot of work has been done. They found that polydopamine is actually uh, did not hinder the viability of the many cells, uh, enzymes, and the tissues, indicating the non-toxicity nature of this material. So, because of this, all these fascinating properties, polydopamine thin film has emerged as a multifunctional coating material. Uh, because the film contains a high density of biological relevant cathode groups, it has a remarkable ability to render materials biocompatibility. And uh, by uh, immobilizing, regulating, or sensing biomicro molecules. Moreover, cathodes can also establish like, interactions with both inorganic and organic surfaces through the covalent bonds. That's why this film has been shown as a universal coating material uh, for many surface modification. So here I would give some examples on the um, applications that potential applications polydopamine offered. At first, because the remarkable adhesion properties of the dicatal functional group and the quinol functional group, we can incorporate this material into some copolymers, and we use this as a uh, underwater superglue. And second, because the polydopamine can be coated on basically any surface. So we put uh, sapphire nanoparticles and coat the polydopamine on the surface of it. And after we remove the central core, we can got a capsule that consists of polydopamine film. And then we can load different kinds of active drugs into this capsule, and then we form an advanced drug delivery system. 
And third one is called the hydrophilic coating. Since it can uh, mask the material properties and can be formed on basically any surfaces, we can coat this film in a traditional non-wetting surfaces, such as Teflon, and then we can convert the surface properties from hydrophobic to hydrophilic like this too, we can see the contact, water contact angle change dramatically. And at last, at last, because the biocompatibility and the adhesion property, we can use polydopine in many biosensor applications. Uh, they can bind to biomicro molecules uh, used as a sensor. So in general, the polydopine thin film uh, has, has been used to modify almost on no uh, material surfaces. But however, there are also uh, many challenges in this system. For example, the first and the foremost important one is the film assembly mechanism and the polydoping structure are still unknown. And the fundamental properties, such as mechanical and adhesion properties, uh, even we found something, for example, uh, the 10 gate pasta elastic modulus of the film, but we still don't know what's the uh, elastic modulus of the same film in wet conditions when polydoping film has been used in biological applications where water is a media. And also the properties uh, of the polydoping and how to combine this uh, adhesion properties and use it to functionalize more important materials like to form a functional nanocomposites are not very defined. So in this presentation, I will, um, and also my PhD study, we focused on the investigation of the polydoping thin film, and then we use it to functionalize a conducting polymer. So that's the overall objectives. We can use it to functional uh, nanocomposites to get the excellent adhesion and the biocompatibility. So the first part of my study is a start from the fundamental study of the polydoping thin film. We characterize the surface property. Uh, we use different substrates. It's like all industrial and commercial available. It's PDMS, glass, and epoxy. We use the inorganic surface, organic surface, and we use plastic, uh, hard surface, soft surfaces. And we're also using micro indentation uh, studies to establish the triple-logical properties, both under dry conditions and wet conditions. Uh, and the second step is we using this to functionalize one of the conducting polymers, polypyro, and we found the resulted uh, nanocomposite has shown improved uh, adhesion properties and the electrical conductivity. Uh, the third part is we want to know why. Because we know after we add dopamine to the functionalized polypyro, we found these uh, properties improved, but we need to know why it improved and what the functions of all different functional groups of, of dopamine can uh, offer to this conducting polymer. And the last part is uh, we use this functionalized composite in many advanced uh, electronics applications. And we're uh, in today's talk, we'll mainly focus on the first three parts as uh, uh, to promote more discussion in the bio biomedical applications. So start with part one, uh, we using the two uh, common techniques, AFM and SEM, to study the surface properties of the polydoping thin film. And the first AFM pictures as have been shown the coated and uncoated area of the polydopamine on PDMS surface. And we found there's an edge in between. So by analyzing this edge, we can get the film thickness of the polydopamine thin film on PDMS substrate. And also we measure the roughness after coating. And we summarized these uh, numbers in this table. we using three substrates. And we found that actually when the polydopamine thin film coated on polymer showed much more thickness, a much higher thickness and the smoother surface than in organic substrate. For example, the PDMS and epoxy have thicker film than glass, and their roughness is actually smaller than glasses. And the SEM picture here shows there is a, a particles deposit on the uh, substrates, and these polydopamine particles are ranged from 50 to 80 nanometers. And the last detailed AFM image, we found that the polydoping thin film is actually a non-continuous uh, porous structure at the dry conditions. 
So to study the adhesion properties of the polydopamine film, we apply the JTR contact mechanics uh, to investigate how the work of adhesion and the elastic modulus of the surfaces. And it related um, the uh, uh, external applied load and uh, the attractive adhesion forces. And we can get these numbers, work of adhesion and the, effect and the effective modulus of the coating. So this, uh, this theory also have assumption that the attractive forces was confined within the area. And also we, need, we have some limitations. For example, we need one body to be compliant. And, we, uh, and this theory applies to the solids of the low elastic moduli, And the one body have to be transparent or opaque in order to uh, observe the contact area in order to apply the equation here. So uh, in order to do this, we developed and the customer made our own micro uh, nano indentation system. Uh, by this system, we can investigate the properties of these uh, films underwater, and we can see it uh, contact area very clearly. So let's look at the principle of this equipment. So there is a, a PDMS tip at the, uh, at the load cell, and then we have two cameras, the bottom view and the side view. So by look at the bottom view, we can observe the contact area of the, of the contact uh, of the surface of the uh, tip and the, and the substrate. And by getting that contact area, we can also get the load force uh, and also the, uh, uh, also the time and the displacement. And after we analyze it in a lab view system, we can get the uh, properties such as work of hashing and the elastic modulus. So in a simple way, we, uh, we brought this tip into contact with the substrate underwater. And after a certain time, we pull, uh, we pull it off. So this curve is a typical load versus displacement curve. We can say this curve is not reversible. And uh, we can say a large amount of hysteresis, uh, indicating there's uh, uh, a lot uh, the strong interactions between the tip and the substrate. So we can say here is a point as the lowest point we corresponding to the y-axis. And we call this force the pull-out force. It's adhesive bonding between the PDMS tip and the substrate. And the right curve is the JKR fitting curve. And by fitting uh, these curves, we can uh, get two uh, important characteristics, which is the work of Haitian and the elastic modulus. And by this experiment was also carried out in water conditions. So we can uh, understanding the properties when polydopamine was in wet conditions. In, uh, in this slide, I summarized all different types of the work of Haitian of the polydopamine film, including the calculated work of Haitian, we, uh, which is got from the JKR contact mechanics, the thermal dynamic work of Haitian, which is calculated by the surface tension of this equation, and the last one, we use the effective work of Haitian calculated from the pull force. So by compiling these three different uh, work of Haitian, so we all found that the substrates were similar, and we all found their uh, properties, the work of Haitian in different types, in different types are actually similar when the polydomping film was in, wet, in uh, dry conditions. But when they are in water, uh, the work of Haitian change a lot. They vary a lot by uh, measuring them in water. So we assume that is a possible formation of the hydration layer on top of the polydopamine film when they are in water conditions. Uh, the hydration effect that I was uh, I will talk about in the next couple of slides. But uh, first, we go to the friction behavior of the polydopamine film. So when we know the indentation machine when we move the tip vertically we do indentation, we can get the work of Haitian and the elastic modulus. But when we, do the, uh, when we slide the tip horizontally, we can measure the friction force, which is important uh, for the same film to be integrated in, in, in practical applications. Here, we employed two methods to study the friction behavior of the power doping same film. The first one is a classic Ampton law, which is here, uh, which 
uh, is the, uh, the friction coefficient at different loads, loading forces can be calculated by using the friction force divided by the loading force. And the second one is the bolden taylor theory, which we add a second component called the adhesion component into the traditional uh, Ampton law. Uh, because the second one is uh, more applicable into our system, that's why we study this when the molecular interaction is pronounced. Um, it doesn't matter which type uh, of the coefficient we, we are starting, we also found that polydoping thin film can actually decrease the friction coefficient in wet conditions on all three different substrates. Uh, doesn't matter if it's PDMS, glass, or, or epoxy. So um, this suggests that the polydoping can be a very good candidate in, for underwater lubrication applications. Uh, one of the typical applications is that we can coat the polydoping thin film in contact lenses. In, an, in that way, we, we can reduce the friction force between the contact lenses between our eyeball. And it's also biocompatible. Um, it's it's a, one of the potential applications as a lubrication. So here we go to the hydration effect. So after we found the lubrication function of the polydoping thin film in water, and we found the differences between the uh, work of adhesion in water and in dry conditions of all three types, uh, we proposed three different possible hydration uh, effects. The first one is that water molecule can simply attach on the surface of the polydoping thin film. And the second type uh, is they are being trapped into the polydoping uh, network. And the last one, we remember the dopamine thin film is a non-continuous porous structure. So this porous can actually attract the, mo the water molecule uh, as, uh, uh, through the hydrogen bonding. And all of these actions can significantly reduce the rigidity of the polydoping film and make it more durable under uh, mechanical strength in water. So in, uh, to summarize the first part, we study the surface properties. We investigated the uh, tripological behaviors, and we also found a strong hydration effect. The technical, the technical implications will be very uh, interesting that we can use uh, dehydration and integrate polydoping coating with different substrates. We can use that uh, as the add layer to bond different materials, and we can use a uh, lubrication for tissue engineering. So the next step, which is part two, is uh, we're using polydoping to modify a conducting polymer to develop functional nanocomposites with excellent biocompatibility and the adhesion. So I would give a very general introduction about uh, electrical conducting polymer. Um, so typically, conducting polymers are polymers that consist uh, consists of alternating single and double bonds, and also their conductivity can be uh, ranged from a semiconductor to like uh, traditional metals, depending on their doping condition. Um, after the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for discovery this uh, electrically conductive polymer uh, in the year of 2000, they have been attracting many attentions in the frontier of material science and engineering. And uh, uh, because of their unique properties, such as high conductivity, mechanical strength, and their biocompatibility. So the conducting polymer we're using in this work is called polypyro. Polypyro um, has a very uh, economic preparation step, and its long-term stability and its high conductivity all make this conducting polymer very unique, and we want to use it. But in the pure polypyro, is in a form of black precipitate that is really hard uh, to. In they are insoluble in water, and they are uh, most of the organic solvents, and it's difficult to process and functionalize. And it's also poor mechanical properties, make it hard to be used directly. So that's why we combined with our uh, dopamine system with the polypyro. Uh, the synthesis is quite uh, straightforward. We just mix the 
dopamine and the pyromonomer into a solution, and then we add the oxidant such as uh, ferric chloride drop wisely into the system and make the temperature at 8 degree, and we stir it overnight, and then we can uh, get the precipitate. And the yield is quite high, it's about 95%, which is very industrial uh, beneficial to use. And currently, uh, we are working on a lab bench scale, but it's uh, for sure not difficult to stir it up. So the powder structure of both unmodified polypyro and the, the doping modified polypyro were collected and uh, examined by ICM. We found these two morphologies, they are dramatically uh, different. The first one has a sphere structure, but second one, they are fibers. This is very interesting. Uh, we completely shift the morphology from the sphere to uh, fibers. But um, even the, the polypyro has been fabricated in a fiber uh, morphology by many of other uh, research. But our one step in situ and the template free method provide a smart strategy to the synthesis of the polypyro nanostructure. So we take a detailed look at of the fiber by TEM image. And we can see this fiber is quite straight. And then by examining the details of this fiber, we can see there's actually a, 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 a cold shell structure. The inside is a polypyro, but the outside is a polydopamine layer. And when we look at these layers, they have a crystalline structure. And we assume that polydopamine is actually adhered to the polypyro surface during the synthesis. And another study we have achieved is to examine its dispersibility. Because the pure polypyro is always precipitated quickly in water or in most organic surface. Uh, but after we functionalize it with dopamine, uh, it contain a lot of uh, hydrophilic functional groups, such as amine and uh, catalase. We found it can be quite stable in all different uh, solvents, such as THF, DMF, water, DMSO. And the unmodified polypyro, they precipitate very quickly. After five hours, they all precipitate. But after the functionalization, we found they stable after five hours. And after one day, only uh, acyl nitrile and the THF, they precipitate. But they, in the other solvents, they still stay dispersible. Uh, it shows successfully functionalization of the dopamine to the polypyro, which uh, abundant amine and hydroxyl functional groups actually uh, contributed to its good dispersibility. Um, then we using FTIR to conform how these two different types of materials has been uh, has been uh, co -pol not pro polymer. They have been. Uh, functionalized by the dopamine. So the pure polypyro has a signature of this uh, yellow curve, and the pure dopamine have a blue curve. They have the uh, carbon carbon six ring member ring stretching. They have the aromatic side chain stretching. And in the middle is a functionalized dopamine uh, polypyro. We can say you can combine the, uh, the different features of both polydoping and the polypyro, it can form that polydoping has been successfully grafted onto the polypyro surface. Um, the adhesion properties and the conductivity of the doping modified polypyro have started uh, have been started by the peeling test and the uh, four point probe. So at first we only want to uh, introduce dopamine to improve the uh, the adhesion properties into the polypyro. But uh, we have successfully achieved that. We found the uh, same film of the fabricated uh, polypyro film has a stronger adhesion to the glass substrate after uh, the functionalization. As the pull out for, as the peeling force has been uh, grow uh, stronger and stronger. But um, it's also a surprise, a lovely surprise. We found that the conductivity of the polypyro was also improved. It's like um, uh, buy one, get one free. We, we, got, uh, we got adhesion improved, and also we got uh, electrical conductivity improved. Um, but after we <coughs> uh, started the system, we found it's not very uh, 
it's not improved that every component, it's only a small amount of dopamine can achieve this uh, conductivity improvement. That's the uh, application, uh, sorry, that's the uh, conductivity improvement. And then we summarize the second part. We successfully functionalized the polypyro with dopamine, and we found the morphology G change. We found the adhesion improved, and we found the electric, electrical conductivity uh, increased as well. And the next step, which is the third step I'm going to talk about, is a, mechan uh, is a mechanism study. We need to know why uh, dopamine can improve the both biocompatibility, uh, the both adhesion and the uh, electrical conductivity of the polypyro. We need to know why we can get one function free. So at first, we begin with uh, investigating uh, the effect of the different uh, functional groups to the morphology of the resulted polypyro structure. We found as long as we have a function as a dicatal functional group present, we can get the fiber morphology in all these three SEM pictures and the in trap and the uh, TM images here. It's, they are all fiber. But we using single amine group without the get cattle, we can we only get spheres. So it is very uh, straightforward that the dead cattle functional groups actually contribute to the morphology shift and amine groups do not have the influence of the morphology of the achieved polypyrofiber. So since there is no template to guide the pyro growth and what is the mechanism of the formation of the cattle uh, polypyrofiber structure, uh, we proposed as here, at first we know uh, the pyro polymerization can achieved in different sites. We call it two, 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 three, and three, three, Different bonding, uh, different bonding structure. So when they are uh, being oxidized, they can form all these three types of bonding. That's why we can form all these interchains and set chains. And these chains are tangled and twisted in water conditions because of their hydrophobic forces. And that's why we make these chains all twisted into a uh, into a sphere structure. And then when we are observe them in SEM, we found they are all sphere instead of a single uh, fiber chain. But after we incorporate the cattle functional groups, we found these cattle functional groups can potentially react with a polymer, uh, with a paromonomer, and uh, to prevent the aggregation of the set chains and the interchains links. And that's why we can get a street uh, straight polymer chain, and when we observe them in SEM, they can show a fiber morphology instead of a sphere. Um, to further support our uh, interpretations, uh, we use DLS to monitor the uh, particle size of all these functionalized uh, materials. And we can say for the cattle, uh, DOPA, and DA functionalized polypyro, they all have a decreased molecular, uh, decreased particle size after we increase the dopamine concentration, which indicating that dopamine molecule can actually terminate the polymerization process and then to form a smaller particle size. And at the meantime, we also study the attention properties of all these three uh, types of the polypyro films. We found for the that cattle functional group modified polypyro, their adhesion are increasing with the uh, more, more dopamine concentration. But as the, in another hand, the, uh, the amine functional groups does not influence adhesion properties of the polypyro at all, and they all showed a very uh, bad adhesion property. So um, then we try to understand why uh, cat horse can improve the conductivity as well. So um, we have an increase at a small amount can, uh, of the cat horse. That's why we try to understand why only small amount can increase the conductivity, not the large amount. So uh, the increase of this, the first step of this increase can, uh, can be attributed to the three reasons. The first, we have a morphology shift. We have a sphere shift into a fiber. Uh, fiber has a more 
uh, interchange so they can contact, they have more contact point in the network. That's why electrons can move more easily in the, uh, in the system to make it more conductive. Also, the cattle derivatives are acidic. It can serve as a doping agent to dope the conducting polymer, make it more conductive. And at the end, we have the adhesion properties of the dopamine. So they can brought these fibers into contact uh, more easily and then to uh, convert, uh, to transport the electrons. All these three reasons can be contributed to the first part of the conductivity improvement. And at the end, they decrease. So uh, we think about it, after we add more cattle functional groups into the system, they are actually uh, formed a thin layer on the, uh, on the polypyro fiber as the TM image can form. So with the more cattles, this film becomes thicker and thicker. So uh, these thicker films are actually uh, non-conductive at all. They are, they are insulating layers. So when we have these insulating layers on top of the polypyro fiber, it will block the electron transfer and then uh, subsequently decrease the um, conducting the electrically uh, the electrical conductivities of the material. Here, um, this slide I'm going to talk about the potential applications of our. Uh, dopamine functionalized polypyro. It has a very uh, broad uh, applications because it has many, diff uh, many properties such as chemical reactivity, high conductivity to convert electrical st uh, stimuli to active uh, cell functions and to, to trigger cell response. And it's also biocompatible. And the adhesion properties make it uh, make the polydopamine polypyro film can stick to almost any surfaces uh, we can use in electrodes or nanoparticles. And there's uh, also a problem in this work since the polymerization process are still unknown and the, uh, and the exact components of the system are not fully explored. But in the future, uh, we believe this system offers many advantages and it can be used in many biomedical applications and to, uh, for, the, uh, for the application in human body and in living organisms. Uh, at the end, I will summarize my work. At first, we studied the fundamental properties of the polydopamine stain film. And second, we using this polydopamine to functionalize uh, conducting polymer polypyro, we found the adhesion and the conductivity improvement. And then third part, we study why poly, poly, polydopamine can make such uh, big differences to the polypyro uh, nano system. And the end, we uh, broaden the application of this system to uh, biological systems. And at the end, I will uh, express my acknowledgement to, uh, to my supervisor, Bo Xing Zhao, and to all my group members. Thank you for your uh, attention. That's my presentation here today. <laughs>